Morning. Good morning, sir. Chinese restaurant upstairs. Oh, I see. You obviously know they're here. Who? Oh, or you're afraid of Mao flu. You can get injections, you know. I think they're going to take the world over. <laughs> I mean, you see a Chinese waiter a couple of times, you think it's the same chap. Actually, I'm absolutely convinced it's a different one every time, and they're slowly filling the world up. One of these days, we look around and every third person to be Chinese, which is what statistics and warnings are about for ages. <laughs> then, when every second restaurant is Chinese, they'll slowly take, start poisoning us and take the country over. <laughs> the only ones who'll survive will be the eaters of Yorkshire pudding chips. What? Survival of the fattest. <laughs> well, didn't somebody say the way to Whitehall was up the Yellow River? They've already filled up the lifts. What are you talking about? The well, place is full of um, westernized oriental gentlemen. W.O.G.s, wogs. That's where the word comes from, did you know? Didn't you have any breakfast, or are you hysterical? You got a cold? No. Oh, why are you gargling? I gargle every morning. It's just that you're usually not in early enough to see it. Uh, I think you started reading those books on how to be virile, though middle-aged again. Is it true? that the word wog derives from the phrase westernized oriental gentleman. Yes. What are they here for? Well, they've come to see Kane. How do you know? I asked the lift man. Did you? Well, we also serve who only stand and wait for lifts. You know what this entails, Garfield? Yes, I know what it entails, Candleford. I'm not asking you to do anything to your disadvantage. Surely articles on the strategic list are there as a matter of agreement between ourselves and our allies. Mm. Well, some of the articles are there simply because nobody ever got round to thinking about them. In much the same way as an Englishman could still be fined a farthing for not practising archery on Sunday. Well, <laughs> of course, that list is designed to prevent goods that might be used in the event of war being sold to a potential enemy. Oh. We couldn't take unilateral action to have anything removed from it without the agreement of the Americans. No, I know that, and we don't intend taking unilateral action. Uh, we simply want to create a climate of opinion. It would be good for trade, Candleford. Well, I don't know. You don't know what? It's all very well having a crack at the government of the day. That doesn't do one any harm at all. But once you get involved in the larger issues, people can turn on you. Yes, well, you haven't got into a larger issue in your whole bloody career, have you? Might put a bit of fizz into your image. My image is doing very nicely, thank you, Minister. Oh, come off it, Campbellford. The last attention-gaining device you tried ended in complete disaster. And your constituents hadn't heard a peep out of you for 18 months before that. I carry out my constitutional duties with as much... You need an issue, Candleford. They're going to ask what you went back for soon. Well, I don't see this. All you have to do is to ask several questions in the House as to why certain strategic articles are still on the strategic list when they've ceased to have any useful purpose there. And by being there, are constipating Britain's trade outlets. It's the sort of thing the papers would soon take up. Yes, I suppose they might. Just you repeat the success you had with badgering them about income tax. Never came to anything, but at least people knew you were about. Which articles do you want? Well, now, you make your own list. But make sure optical goods are on it. They're the top. Optical goods? Yeah, lenses, binoculars, microscopes, telescopes, all that sort of thing. I see. And if I should... Oh, don't worry, Candleford. You'll be looked after. Chinese? Yes, Don says the place is overrun with them. Well, it is the foreign they office. They came here to see Kane, apparently. Oh, well, I'm afraid I know nothing about it. Probably some deputation. Why? I just like to know how things are developing in the department, don't you? No doubt one will be told. You don't have, do you? Don't what? Any doubt that you'll be told. If necessary. You know, there are people, Wilder, who are beginning to despair that this department is being run like a race between you and Kane to put one over on each other. I hope you're keeping score. 
Do you agree that we approve those allocations or not? Certainly. Will you initial them then? Yes. Is uh, Kane in his office? He was. I believe he's gone over to the house. No. Yes, well, if you see him, would you tell him I'd like a word with him this afternoon? He's going over to Paris this afternoon. Why? I'm afraid he didn't tell me. I'll bet he didn't. All right, Jill. I'll be back in the office in ten minutes. He's treading on my toes. Kane? Hmm. Well, the pain is probably mutual. He wants me out. And uh, by association, you also. I know. Doesn't it worry you? Established civil servants are harder to get rid of than that. He could have you moved. It depends on the form the move would take, wouldn't it? Don't you object to sweating out the rest of your career in some dusty backwater? What have you got in mind? Well, every time he gets something over on me, he gets something over on you. He nibbles away at the foundations till he can make us both topple. And? Do you know why he's going to Paris? No. No. No, nobody does. Where are you going now? I've got to go down to Hoban, then lunch. Could we get somebody to pop over to Paris for us this afternoon? To do what? Just to look around. Someone who Kane doesn't know. Yes, I think I can. But I'd have to catch the 2.30 plane. I've already had a seat booked on it. Have you? OK, I'll fix it up. What are you doing in Hoban? Nothing much, just routine. I want out. <laughs> Don't let them hustle you, Lincoln. You have a brain. Use it. I'm sick of being caught in the crossfire between your husband and your friend Kane. He's not my friend. Not in the sense you mean, anyway. Well, our friend Kane, then. Doesn't matter which of them wins, it won't advance me one inch. So what are you going to do? I haven't really decided. Kenneth Bly offered me a directorship with his firm. I've been talking to him about it this morning. They're doing very well. You're going to take it? I don't know. It means herring off on a completely new path rather sooner than I'd planned. Still. You don't really want to go, do you? No, not really. Still, if there's a choice between that and ending up like Jason Fowler... <laughs> oh, you won't, for God's sake, tell John I saw Kenneth, will you? How in the world should I know? No, of course I won't. Where, um... Where would this job be that Kenneth is offering you? Well, the first two years would be in Canada. Oh. And that's another thing, isn't it? What? I'm also sick of sneaking out to meet you in obreptitious little corners. That's a good word. What does it mean? As if I didn't know. Aren't you sick of it? Yes. Frightens me, Lincoln. I don't know why, but it frightens me. If I took Kenneth's job. I know. We are coming very rapidly to a decision. Yes, I know we are. That frightens me, too. Well, it looks as our table's ready. Nobody met him at Orly. I assumed the trip was unofficial. There was a car waiting, but not an embassy car. Where did he go? 278 Rue Jacques O'Hara. Who lives there? It's a pied a terre. Nobody actually lives there. The servants, man and wife, come in when it's in use. Who does it belong to? Hard to say who it belongs to. We suspect the title is held by the DDECE. Who? Oh? Uh, Département de Documentation Extérieure et Contre Espionnage. Espionnage? Well, that doesn't make it all that suspect. On the whole, it seems to be used overnight by out-of-town deputies who haven't anywhere else to go. Who was using it? Well, that's what was interesting. It wasn't an out-of-town anybody. It was Monsieur Sanglaire, Albert Sanglaire. Really? Who is Albert Sanglaire? Was anybody else with him? Yes. About half an hour after Mr. Kane arrived, Henri Mamiel turned up. If you wouldn't mind, Lincoln, Vietnam Solidarity Front. Vietnam? They needn't be directly Vietnam. Mamiel is a pretty solid Maoist. He has other connections. Well, will you explain to me what's going on? Sanglaire and Mamiel. It could only be a commercial connection. 
Songlair wouldn't smudge his position with doubtful political deals. No, I wouldn't have thought so. Well, when he left, he went along to the Fantasie with Songlair. They had a couple of drinks and were joined by a man called Maloon. Now, he's something in the Department of Posts and Telegraphs, whatever that might mean. He was with a chap called Seung Tae, lives in Hong Kong, has a factory there assembling binoculars, microscopes. He's lived there all his life, but he's a Han Chinese. And another chap whose name I didn't know, but I gather he's from the Chinese mainland. Someone thought Hailung Kiang, and something to do with the Department of Industry. Good. Thank you. That's it? That's it. Well, thank you, Mr... Uh, thank you. I'll have to list it, you know. Why? Well, they know you asked for me. They'll want a 17A at least. Oh, I give them a 17A and list it as external. I doubt if they'll wear it. Not if I don't detail it. But list it as external. Foreign Office supplementary. All right. I can expect you to OK it? Yes, we'll OK it. OK. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, Lincoln, translate. We just asked him to get information. Who knows what it means? What do you think it means? Well, the obvious assumption is that Kane's up to something. Not quite on the level, eh? Otherwise, why all this cloak and dagger? Well, he wasn't really cloak and daggering, was he? We were the ones who were doing that. Well, let's say he's making unscheduled visits to Paris, seeing Maoists in houses belonging to the CGCD, whatever. Uh, DDEC. Chinese industrialists, Peking politicians, and God knows what else. I wouldn't jump in feet first. I'm not going to. Good. But you are. I want you to find out what's happening. If I might hazard a guess. Do. He's quite probably opening up contacts for something that may come along later. In fact, if I had to describe it, I'd say he's probably doing a John Wilder. <laughs> really? Well, that's certainly something that has to be stopped. Anyway, find out what you can. All right. Oh, you realize having you as our friend today, we may well have security sniffing around to see what it's all about. Good. Good? Yes, Lincoln. Good. I just thought of something. What? He couldn't have met any of those people without the French knowing about it. In fact, he used a house belonging to them. So if we put a man onto him, what's to say they didn't put a man on our man? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Don, if you don't get out of my hair, I may break your back. Ah, did you have a good trip? Mm. Hammersmith flyover was jammed. I'm still going to find out what you're up to. John, I'm warning you. Keep your nose out of it, or I'll break your back. Try it. I'll break your heart. Meaning? All right, what the hell do you think you're doing? In what sense, Minister? One thing I know about Wilder, he doesn't have access. Never in a million years would they allow him access. Now, you, you're a different kettle of fish, aren't you? And the fish is beginning to stink. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. For God's sake, don't talk to me as if I was cabbage green around the ears. I know you were recruited. I can almost tell you the day you were recruited. Someone's been giving you inaccurate, albeit classified, information. You were pretty sure I wouldn't recognize your chap, weren't you? But what you didn't think of was that another agent might recognize him. You should have got someone with deeper cover. Or wouldn't they let you have anyone like that without asking questions? I do wish you'd explain this to me, Minister. Well, I couldn't have got someone like that, not from that department, but you are in that department, aren't you? One of our snivelling teacher's pets creeping to the headmaster is what the big boys are up to. I'm not prepared to take this No, sort of thing. not even from someone aren't in your you? position. you? Then where do you want me to put you so that you don't have to? Now, you listen to me, Lincoln. We can get along very well if we have to get along. Just you declare your neutrality like a good, dedicated civil servant should. It may have escaped your notice, but in fact, I am the minister responsible for this department. And you know the saying, it's better to know the judge than to know the law. It, Jason Fowler's nanny made him say it every night instead of prayers. Yes, well, I didn't have a nanny. I had a supervisor coming round every night at nine o'clock threatening to beat hell out of us if we were still talking after lights out and we'd be chucked out of the orphanage and then where would we be? Mm, politicians in Her Majesty's government at five and a half thousand a year. I didn't have a nanny either. They're pretty rare in council houses. I wonder where all the other lads who were at school with us are now. Mm. All right, Lincoln, your sleeve isn't full of trump cards. I'm just telling you. Oh, no, the etiquette here is one doesn't tell. One suggests in an amiable spirit of concord. We've both learned that. It's how we got out of our class. Yeah. Well, contrary to the spirit of the service, Lincoln, 
I am telling you. What? You declare your neutrality. Now, if you can't declare it, abide by it. Or? Or I'll break your back, too. One could hurt one's hand doing that, you know. I didn't know you were a drinker of darkness, Lincoln. I was looking for you. Someone said you might be here. That sort of news shouldn't travel. I do all I can to see that it doesn't. It's a very minor lunchtime sin for which I'm sure one won't lose one's place in heaven. Why did you want to see me and not in the office? I thought we might have a chat. Oh. It's very nice. I wonder if one might lose one's place in heaven. We need to be led, don't we? To be told so much. Who's to tell us? Too many people seem to be telling too many things too often, it seems to me. Do you think so? You know what those two are going to do, don't you, between them? They're going to destroy the department. They might, certainly they might. And yet we could prevent it, or determine who is going to win. Oh, God, what does it matter which of their infantile ambitions wins or doesn't win? I'm sorry. But of course it matters, the department. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Wouldn't you prefer to win, too? To win? Oh, yes. I think I'd prefer that more than anything. One has other responsibilities than just one's pension, you know. I always think it's so silly of them to try and give this impression of spurious eroticism. Quite sure there isn't a man here who believes it. Beauty is in repose. I think women never know when they're being beautiful or desirable. They never know, and we're never able to tell them. The great uncrossable barrier between what men need and what women are. I sometimes think it would take a language without words to be able to speak about it. Is that perhaps what sex is? I'm not well, Lincoln. Incurably not well. Oh, no, not immediately. Some little time, but foreseeably so. Sufficiently for them to advise one that one should put one's house in order. <laughs> one's house. Eight leather-bound first editions of the Waverley novels. A hundred minor first editions, and a good lady, Mrs. Hatley, who prepares my food, my bed, and cleans my bath every morning. <laughs> it always seems to be dark in my house when I get home. I have to switch the lights on. It's just as if she were saving up all the electricity somewhere in a box for some great bright day when all the lights of the world will go on. Jason. No. Oh, I don't know why one's body should treat one like this when one's always tried to be kind to it. Still, there's no point in it. I think he said it was an irreversible process. <laughs> Rather like politics. Jason, honestly, I... Yes, I know. One can only think of clichés. When one's driven into a corner, all one can say is, Mummy, help me. Or something equally ridiculous. I wish I could go up to her and say, I don't know what I want, a wife, a mistress, or a daughter. It's so stupid to have missed all three. Oh, by the way, congratulations. On what? On your promotion. Why, didn't you know? You're being sent to Jakarta as first secretary. It's quite a useful place to serve. Didn't you know? No. They're not really. Moving you out, is he? Looks like it. Doesn't it worry you? It is a promotion. Don't you want it? No. Ah, oh, why not? I had other ideas of what I wanted to do. Do you? You know, we don't always get the things we want the way we want them, do we? You seem to. Do I? 
Well, if you don't want it, what are you going to do about it? Uh, what are you going to do about it? Why should I do anything about it? You want your allies depleted? Oh, allies. Hmm. So we've progressed through what just is it that Lincoln Dowling does? Is he on my side or their side? Through I'm your assistant, that's one who assists, to being an ally. You don't even take down shorthand, Lincoln. But you seem to be very good at entertaining my wife. I... Well, aren't you? Oh, well, well, a common interest in the arts, in the humanities, it's perfectly natural. One meets too few people who seem as absorbed in the things that interest one oneself. When one does, one tends to cling on to them. I've always wished that I could have met more such people. So, I'm to take it, you're going to do nothing about this posting? For one reason or another? Well, just as you wish. What about Kane and his Oriental friends? Don't you want me to go on helping you with that? How long is it before your posting takes effect? Two, three weeks? Months. Unless, of course, this is an emergency replacement. Is it? I don't think so. Well, nothing's changed, has it? We still have at least two or three weeks to get things tied up. Now, if you'll excuse me. At the most. I see. It could be a month, or if he really wants to be bloody-minded about it, he could arrange to have me flown out in two or three days. Two or three days? Emergency replacement. Oh, would you like another drink? Uh, no. No, I, I've still got one. You have one. No, oh, no, mine's all right, thanks. No, OK. So what are you going to do? It doesn't give me much time to do anything, does it? If I can't get out of it. Do you think it might be able to get out of it? I doubt it. I think he's got me tied up so tight, if I try and struggle, I'll strangle myself. So you'll have to go? No. Well, not to Jakarta, anyway. I'm but damned if I'm going to take that dusty road to the top. But if I can't wriggle out of it, I'll take up Kenneth's offer in Canada. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. So whatever happens, you'll have to go. Looks like it. It also looks as though we've come to the time for that decision. John Wilde. <laughs> John Wilde is a living reader. We didn't think you managed to make it. Yeah, by success looks to agree with you, lad. <laughs> How are you, Walter? You remember Don Henderson? Donald! Oh, well, hi, Walter. Next. Yeah, you're putting on weight. <laughs> and Frank? And Harry? Oh, I know these two. I meet them about once a month, and that's too often. <laughs> well, are you going to have a drink, then? You will bet I am. I'm on committee this year. I can do what I damn well like. Well, well. So you're an ambassador, eh? Hey, no wonder country's going to the dogs. <laughs> you're out there. It's nice to see you, Walter. Oh, don't think I'm talking to you because I like the look of your face. No, I've been detailed to look after the celebrities tonight, and I thought you'd come under that heading. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to go to the MP somewhere. I suppose he's wandering round sucking up to the poor voters. <laughs> How's Mary? Oh, she's fine, fine. Is yeah. she well? Oh, she's... Well, we're all knocking on a bit, you know, John. I mean, an engine's only got a certain number of running hours, has it? She's as well as I am, whatever that means. <laughs> Good. Are you, uh, still at Hambleford's? Oh, no, I left there about three years ago, no. Yeah, I'm back at Farnborough now. Oh, I don't believe that. I mean, is there an aircraft industry or isn't there? Nobody seems to want to make up their mind. It's boom one minute and redundancy the next. Uh, you are very wise to get your backside out of it, John. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. Oh, I better go and find my bloody MP and see he knows which knife to use first. Yeah, yeah, we'll get speeches over and then we'll have a jar and a natter, eh? I'd like that very much, Walter. Well, now I must get on with my ceremonial duties. You were sir and me on committee. We haven't done so badly, have we, lad? Time is the only thing I really have. 
And I'm damned if I'm going to put up with other people telling me how I should spend it. No? No. Well, that's nice for you, isn't it? What's the matter? It's raining. Thing is, I don't really see where it gets him. That's what's so bloody stupid about it. I've got a light. Something occurred to me this evening. When? This evening. When did it occur to you this evening? What were you doing when this, whatever it was, occurred to you? How do you mean? <laughs> All right. What was it that occurred to you? What do you think John knows about us? I don't know. Nothing, I think. He might. He might. You're right. Yeah, sure. Of course I am. Don't worry. What was it that occurred to you, then? Well, that it needn't have been Kane who arranged my transfer. It could have been your husband. Uh -huh. I suppose it, that's possible, yes. Do you think he knows something? I don't know. <laughs> Hasn't said anything. No, but he might, mightn't he? He might. Couldn't be easier for him, could it, if he wanted me out of the way? Just listen to it. Didn't even bring an umbrella. Do you think he does suspect? <laughs> well, what does it matter if he does? You're not being transferred because you're resigning. I'd just like to know. If I'm going to Canada with you, I know. Put this out for me, will you? Quickly, Linga. Please. Old Francis don't half natter on, does he? <laughs> Only time anyone ever listens to him at one of these duels. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, Walter. All that tripe about long-haired youth, he, I've got one at my office, hair right down to his shoulders. Lady Godiva, I called him. <laughs> he just laughed. You're jealous, Walter. And grass can't grow on a busy street. I see you managed to keep yours all right. But I'll tell you one thing. If I want a fast stress analysis that I can lean on, it's Godiva I go to every time. So you mean grass can grow on a busy street? He can grow any damn well except on my lawn. Clover, yes, but grass, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder where my bloody MP is. I suppose I'd better find him and get him a drink or something. I suppose you're used to drinking with politicians, John. Well, I can swallow my pride for once. He's there, he is. We look so right to it, but we better have him over. Would you mind? Uh, Mr. Candleford. Ah, hello. There you are. Uh, can I get you a drink? A uh, brandy, thank you. There uh, you know Sir John Wilder and Mr. Henderson. Yes, of course, we've met. Have we? A very warm personality is Mr. Candleford. Warm, just like horse manures warm. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Candleford, must keep our representative stopped up. Or anesthetized. Yeah, you got one. Yes. Splendid speech of Sir Francis, I thought. Yes? Excellent. Glad to see him having a go at all these long-haired young layabouts. Ah, uh, you're out of sympathy with hairy youth, then. Perhaps he thinks that Fuzz belongs to the middle-aged John. I always say one has to earn one's whiskers. Do you? Where did you get yours from? <laughs> My dear fellow, with 20,000 a year, you can do as you damn well please. Really? Is that another thing you're always saying? You know, Donald, it isn't as being an MP I object to, but it's in spite of that he's got a home. Hope you've been following my efforts on behalf of your department, Wilder. My department? Yours and your ministers. What have you been doing on behalf of uh, our department, Mr. Cadenford? Haven't you read my speeches? I think I can say we're beginning to make their skin itch. Really? Kane was right. The papers are beginning to take it up. Had a couple of chappies round this afternoon. I just oh, there's Sir Francis. Excuse me. I'd better just have a word with him. John. Oh, get hold of a copy of Hansard. Find out what that idiot has been saying. 20,000 a year and he can do as he damn well likes. And on that medieval philosophy, 
He has the votes of thousands of poor, bloody voters. After seeing him, you know, I'd grow my hair right down to my blasted boots. Oh. If I could. Yeah. Morning, Lincoln. The name is Lee House, you remember? Morning. Why did you want to meet me here? Well, as if you didn't know. All right. What do you say? Oh, it interested me. Want to know more? There isn't any more. I put it all in the report. Don't slip your zip, Dad. You called for one of our people. We had a very long committal, 17 A. Now, was it about this? Yes. Are we going to put in a report about that? I mean, after all, using one of our chaps, if it we became do necessary. Ah. Now you think it is necessary? Yes. Why now, not earlier? Now, I'm only evaluating things, and it is my department. Why not, then? I wasn't sure. Well, now you are sure. Yes. Something happened to make you sure? Yes. I see. It's a walloping great charge, lad. A minister of the Crown, secret meetings in Paris with members of a foreign communist power. A hell of a charge, lad. Well, that's what he did. Possibly. Now, what we want to know is, do we blast in and ask him what he's up to and risk a perfectly explicable answer, or do we merge quietly into the background and see if there's an answer which isn't quite so explicable? Well, that's up to you, isn't it? How very true, Lincoln. Uh, what's happened to make you sure? I think he knows I'm onto him. Why? Because he's had me posted abroad to Jakarta. Has he now? Do you want to go? Uh, very much. I just thought you ought to know. Hmm. Quite. Does he know you're with us? Yes. Uh, trying to winkle you out, is he? What do you think you'll do? Me? Oh, I should just put in a report, Lincoln. That's my function in life. But no doubt someone will take a second look at our Mr. Kane. We're very grateful to you, Lincoln. Not at all. Very grateful indeed. Uh, here lies the bones of Elizabeth Charlotte, born a virgin but died a harlot. She was still a virgin at 17. A remarkable thing in Aberdeen. <laughs> you know, that's supposed to be carved on a stone in an Aberdeen churchyard, I doubt it. I think it's just part of the great British myth-making. <laughs> yes, I'm, uh, I'm sorry John's late. Um, no, thank you, no. He said he'd be back at two o'clock. Well, that's okay, Mr. Henderson, I'm in no rush. Uh, do you happen to know what Sir John wants to talk to me about? I'm afraid not, no. Oh, well, never mind. Now, I like this one. It's, uh, it's not an epitaph, but it has a kind of a period flavor about it. There was an old man from Darjeeling who traveled from London to Ealing. It said on the door, please don't spit on the floor. So he carefully spat on the ceiling. <laughs> no, I've not heard that. Ah, <laughs> oh, here's John. Oh, oh Mr. Edmund. Oh, uh, the minister? He's out, I'm afraid. Oh, I'll come back later. Well, Lincoln. Could I have a word with you? Yeah, sure. Well, I just wanted to say I'd be very grateful if you wouldn't mention what we were talking about the other day. You know, my... Oh, no, well, of course not. Well, it's no concern of anybody else if you'll just keep it to yourself. Yes, certainly. Well, I'll come back when the minister's in. I gather you were looking forward to going to Jakarta. Oh, yes. Why, what's happened? You seem to be the last to hear about everything. Your posting's been cancelled. Why? Well, I don't know. Word came through that on no account were you to be posted. It's bad luck if you were looking forward to it. What did the minister say? Well, I haven't spoken to him. But never mind. One door closes, another door opens. How do you mean? Well, in my annual report, I put that I, I thought you were exceptional. And I hear they agree with me. Where am I going? Well, nowhere as humidly romantic as Jakarta, I'm afraid. It'll mean you'll be remaining in London. To do what? Well, you'll be getting official words, so I don't think I'd better say too much. It's quite a lift for you. I see. I just wondered what you thought the attitude of your government would be towards these articles. Well, I think you know what that would be, Sir John. We feel that all the articles at present are on the strategic list are there because they are actually of some strategic value to our enemies. Yes, but if the uh, situation changed in the Far East and the foreseeable future, would your attitude change towards these articles? Oh, but if it are... Whatever changes take place over the next two or three years, 
At the moment, whatever the rights and wrongs, we do have a very deep commitment in Vietnam. Now, my own attitude and that of many of my colleagues is even if one is doing it for the wrong reasons, which is disputable, even to send one battalion of men into a combat area and then to undermine their security at home and without their knowledge would be an inexcusable breach of faith. We can discuss it, Sir John. They have to fight it. So you would be opposed? Why does Mr. Kane feel this way? Well, I merely think he's trying to open up other trading areas. There's nothing more sinister than that. You tell me he's bringing pressure to get backing. Yes. Do you think he has any chances? Well, I think he might have. Might have had. Something's happening. Mr. Edmonds, to be honest, I don't entirely disagree with him. The optical goods on the list that he's concerned with are not immediately strategic. If they didn't get them from us, they could get them elsewhere. Uh, they are. We are not the only people that make them. Nevertheless. Now, things have come off the strategic list, which your country have been quite happy to sell. I must say that on your behalf, I've been trying to slow up this exercise, and in two or three weeks, I may be able to stamp it in altogether. But you must understand that it is to my country's disadvantage, and I may be told so. I quite see that, Sir John. It does mean an area of trade close to you. Exactly. But uh, suppose other areas were opened up, then it might save my neck and save you a lot of bother. Quite. Have you got anything in mind? Well, for instance, if I went to my people with a uh, possible agreement on, say, space instrumentation, which would be to the advantage of my country, uh, I have no doubt that they would uh, be willing to swap one for another. Well, I think maybe a little reorientation with the powers that be might be coordinated to that end. Ah, well, it would be a step in the right direction. Now, how about that, Rick? Fine. Yes, a minute. Oh, sorry. Ah. Thank you, Lincoln. Uh, ground? No, sir. I'm going to visit you. Well, you're not leaving us after all, eh? No, apparently not. Father told me. Really? Getting promotion, I hear. Yes, so it seems. Well, that's very nice for you. I'm sure you deserve it. Mind you, I had hoped if uh, you'd been going abroad, we wouldn't be quite so pestered by those friends of yours from security. Every time I came my hair, two or three fall out. I used to think it was Dan Crump. But I can assure you... No, 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 don't, Lincoln, don't. I might have to believe you. Oh, by the way, it wasn't me who arranged you to be posted. I don't really care whether you're here or not. You put him on to me. Put who on to you? Come on, John, you know what I'm talking about. Lincoln Dowling and his gang of witch hunters. He wouldn't have had the guts to start this on his own, that's for sure. I had a very oily gentleman named Mobs waiting for me in my office just now, suggesting what I should and shouldn't do for the benefit of the Crown. I have no idea what you're talking about. No. No, I merely asked Dowling if he could find out what your interests were in Paris, that was all. I asked you very specifically to stay out of this one. You told me, very rudely. But as usual, you took it as a slight on your commercial virility and decided to stick your own oar into what end I really can't imagine. This absurd scheme had no chance of ever getting off the ground. Do you imagine for one moment that the Americans would allow to be taken off the strategic list anything that they thought even remotely might not be to their advantage? Well, they strategically won't. Strategically or commercially. They're not only a military power, they're a commercial power. You have to deal with them like any other competitor in business. Oh, your mind is jammed up in business, isn't it? You're like one of these halfwits who say the country would be better run if we had a government made up of businessmen. Well, wouldn't it possibly be? Oh, forget about it. They tried that in Germany, didn't they? Romance and big business. That ends up turning people into soap. I asked you to stay out of this. You told me. Well, I'm sorry I should have asked you. Oh, this would present a scene of some beauty to a passing citizen, wouldn't it? A minister of the crown and an ambassador in a slagging match. Well, if any passing citizen imagine that it doesn't happen, they'd better grow up before the next elections. 
I was told to do it, you know. Asked or told or whatever. It was decided that certain articles were on the strategic list, not because they had any strategic purpose, but because they'd always been there. We are trying in this country to be both a political and a commercial power, but if you take away our commercial potential, we cease to be a political one. You know this. This is why you go herring off after every business opening like a sex maniac when the whorehouse lights go on. Very pretty report. They wanted the whole list reviewed, and they're quite right. And you think about it, you could probably draw up a strategic list that prohibited the export of chewing gum. So? So you've sodded the whole thing up. I agree it's probably bad communications, and bad communications seem to be the nature of the way we set things up. But now, we've got security, we've got the Americans, you name it, and we've got it trampling all over us. Wouldn't it have been easier if you'd have just let me know? Well, I suppose so. But they wanted it doing with the minimum of exposure. Well, I suppose we'll just have to wait for a year or so and then start all over again. Now, I didn't put security onto you, even over that Paris thing. I thought it would be just someone from this office. Oh. Well, they'll crawl back into their holes as soon as somebody gives them an official hot foot. They're not so frightening. Things could be worse, couldn't they? Huh? Well, what I mean is if we don't open up in China, we do have the beginnings of a new agreement with America. Have we? Yes. Yes, we have. On space instrumentation. Snap. When the Americans asked us if we'd soft pedal it, the foreign secretary and I said we would if we could talk about a civil engineering project. Hey, you're very good health. Oh, by the way, hmm? uh, uh, was it you that had uh, Lincoln Dowling transferred? No. Wasn't it you? No. Hell, don't tell me there's someone else in here that wants to get rid of him. Oh, hello, Jason. I was even there for the minister. Oh, Lincoln, I was just wondering. I was just wondering if you had nothing particular to do this evening. Well, I was just wondering if you'd care to have a meal with me somewhere. Well, that's very kind of you, Jason. Well, it was just... I... Well, if you had nothing to do particularly. Well, actually, Jason, I have something quite important on tonight. I would have liked... Oh, no, no, that's, that's all right. No, no, I, I just suddenly thought of it. We can do it again. You're going out, are you? It's just that it's different now. You're not going to Jakarta? No. Nor to Canada? No. So it's different now? No, I didn't say that. Which that do you mean? The that of my not coming to Canada with you or the that of my coming up here to see you whenever you feel it might be nice? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Suddenly everything's different. Which that have we given up? Simply that I'm not now going abroad. Lincoln. I was about to alter my entire life for you. You asked me to, and I, I might just have been prepared to do so. In two weeks, I would have had to reorganize my whole life. All you had to do was to buy two tickets to Canada and alter your job. And suddenly it's different. I didn't say that. Because you've been offered a new job, you're not going to buy those tickets. You tell me this evening. But you knew this morning. At any time I might have spoken to John. You didn't. No. No, I didn't. All I said was we'd have to be careful. Because it might endanger your new job. Oh, I didn't mean it to sound like that. Oh, no, of course you didn't. You didn't mean to go on talking about yourself and your problems that, that night when I was up here with you. But you did. Oh, I know you. I married you. No. Pamela. You must not be silly about it. It's all been a terrible mistake. You're afraid that I, I might be embarrassment to you in your new job. That's unfair. And I'm afraid that in five years from now, I shan't be able to tell the difference between you and John Wilder. But Pamela. Pamela. 
You have it wrong, you know. Canada, yes. Even Jakarta. But not London. Hell, look where I live. Look where you live. Well, this promotion doesn't make me rich. I've got to work things out. I need a day or two to think. Yes. Take all the time you want, Lincoln. Mrs. Hatley? Are you up there, Mrs. Hatley? I had a meal with Walter Hallam this evening. Did you? I think it was the most pleasant thing that's happened to me this week, seeing him again. Was it? it made me want to go back into aircraft. Why don't you? What did you do tonight? Went to a show. Any good? Average. <laughs> <laughs> 